This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello and welcome to Squeeze Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Thursday, July 22. In Squiz Kids Today, Brisbane Olympics, here we come. Bear tries its hand at Olympic softball. Bucks win NBA final. And gaming comes to Netflix. That's what's making news, kids style. The lowdown. And the winner is... Brisbane! At a special ceremony in Tokyo last night, the Queensland capital was named as the host city for the 2032 Olympic Games. I know, does it get more exciting than that? There were celebrations throughout the River City, which is the name Brizzy sometimes goes by, as the 2.3 million residents of Australia's third largest city came to grips with the news that in 11 years' time, they would be hosting the biggest sporting event in the world. The last time Australia hosted an Olympic Games was in the year 2000, in Sydney. And before that, it was Melbourne in the year 1956. There were no other cities in the race for the 2032 Games, which made it something of a foregone conclusion, but nothing could dampen the excitement that came with the official confirmation last night. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. 11 years is plenty of time for all of us to pick a sport and start training hard with a view to wearing the green and gold in Brisbane and winning a medal for our country. I'm thinking either skateboarding or maybe rhythmic gymnastics. Hmm. Because the Tokyo Olympics opening ceremony is tomorrow... And because the Brisbane Olympics are now officially confirmed for 2032, we're getting into the Olympic spirit here at Squiz Kids with the release today of a super excellent Squiz Kids Olympics Q&A featuring Olympic sprinter Matt Shervington and Olympic pole vaulter Emma George. Tune in to learn what it's like to compete at an Olympics, what sort of training is required to go up against the world's best, and who they think is the greatest Olympian of all time. If you're listening on a podcast app, the Q&A should play straight after this episode of Squiz Kids today. Otherwise, you can find it on our website, squizkids.com.au. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in Japan. Where else? Where the first game of the Tokyo Olympics was thrown into a mild state of chaos after a bear invaded the playing field. Olympic officials at the softball pitch in the town of Fukushima were on high alert in the hours leading up to the first competition to kick off the Games, a softball match between host country Japan and Australia. A bear had been spotted roaming about the stadium. Fireworks were let off and loud music blasted in an attempt to scare the bear away. As for the match, it was an awesome outcome. If you're a fan of the Japanese softball team, that is. Australia lost by 8 to 1. At least no one ran into a bear, though, while trying to steal first base. So that's something. Sport time! Here's a name you're going to want to remember, assuming it isn't already burned into your brain. Giannis and Tetacumpo. The 2 metre, 11 centimetre tall star forward of the Milwaukee Bucks basketball team yesterday nabbed himself a spot in the sporting history books by helping his team win the NBA championship and scoring 50 points along the way. Known as the Greek Freak for the fact he was born in Greece to parents who come from Nigeria in Africa, plus the fact he is freakishly tall and freakishly talented, Giannis was awarded Most Valuable Player of the Final Series, which saw his team win its first title in 50 years, beating the Phoenix Suns by 105 points to 98. 
I've stuck a link in today's episode notes to an excellent video about Giannis' backstory. Pop Culture Corner. As if you needed another excuse to spend even more time on Netflix. The streaming company yesterday announced plans to keep your eyeballs glued to their screens even longer by offering video games as part of their subscription too. Netflix already dipped its toe into the gaming world with the launch of a Stranger Things game last year, which was playable on Xbox and PlayStation. But now it's planning to host games right there on the Netflix platform itself. So you never have to leave. Your parents will be delighted. The company said it wants to stop losing customers to Fortnite and Xbox. So it's exploring making more games inspired by Netflix shows, as well as licensing existing games. Licensing means paying money to someone for the right to use their content. Which TV show would you like to see made into a video game? I'm trying to imagine how a Nailed It game would work. Those terrible attempts at cakes make me laugh out loud. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What year will Brisbane host the Olympic Games? That's right, the year 2032. Question number two. What sort of animal made an unwelcome appearance at an Olympic softball game yesterday? Yeah, it was a bear. Question number three. What's the name of the team that won this year's NBA Basketball Championship? You got it, it was the Milwaukee Bucks. Shout out. It's July 22, World Brain Day, where we celebrate how marvellous is the human brain. It's also World Boxing Day, which is kind of funny when you think about it. It's also a special day for these squiz kids celebrating a birthday today. Lucas from Abbotsford, Jack from Dolby, Clara from Marsfield, William from Canberra, Elliot from Yarraville, Jeanette from West Pennant Hills, Jocelyn from Sydney, Olivia from Epping and Lily from North Ride. And a very happy belated birthday to George from Tamworth. Don't forget, of course, while so many of us are in lockdown around the country, we're sending out home learning herograms. And today's herograms go to... Ms Costa from Forestville Public School, whose Class 6C want to thank for working so hard for them during their online schooling. A herogram also to Classes 6G and L at Eastwood Public School from your teacher, Ms Griffiths, who says you are all working so hard. She hopes this little message cheers you up and reminds you that as isolating as it may feel in lockdown, you are not alone. And finally, a classroom shout-out to Class 3 for Banksia and Miss Hurrell at Westport Public School in Port Macquarie, who fortunately are not in lockdown, but have been waiting very patiently for their classroom shout-out. Thanks to everyone who has sent in a classroom shout-out request. The list is long. We're working our way through it. We haven't forgotten you. Thanks so much for being patient. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out, or if you're after a classroom shout-out, or if you'd like to send a home learning herogram to your class or your kids, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. Squeeze Kids is proudly supported by the Judith Nielsen Institute for Journalism and Ideas. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun. Free. Fresh.